Hi everyone, me again with a, another short tutorial. This one we're doing a half donut. Um, and I couldn't find anything particularly useful uh, when I googled for it. So as usual, if it took me a long time to try and find the necessary resources, some of the resources were incomplete, uh, you should go ahead and try and do a little bit of a tutorial on it so that uh, maybe somebody doesn't suffer the same amount of wasted time as myself. So, half donut. Um, let me start off coding this out then and um, I'm going to do it by first of all just creating a box and um, we're going to start like uh, modeling out from that box so let me give it a class so we can start building up some styles for it and I'm going to call it shape just run that okay so I'm using this online editor for uh, W3 schools actually I just found one of their files and um, I've just been hacking through this editor, so it's quite useful. It's quite good for um, uh, doing some quick POC work. So um, let me create the corresponding class for this. Um, let me call it a shape. And um, I just want to give it just a bit of definition so we can see what it is, where it is exactly. Um, let's give it a width of 100 pixels and let's give it a height of 100 pixels and uh, let's just give it a background color so we can see where it is and let's make it red. Okie dokie, run that. What a, okay, got a shape. Super. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm going to start doing is to um, add some borders to it. and. The reason for this is that we're actually going to turn the borders into the uh, the half donut rather than the actual box itself, and we're going to like use um, like a smooth border radius, uh, which is going to turn into half the circle. So let me show you how to do that. So first of all, let me create a border at the top, uh, and that is going to be let's make it 50 pixels, which is kind of like half the size of the shape, um, solid. And I want to use like a, I can use a, like a kind of blue color. I uh, use 37, 5C89. Okay, that should create one at the top. Cool. And then I want, just copy paste that. I want one on the left side as well. And border left. There we go. So, got those two, um, and then uh, what I want to do is I want to like smooth these using the border radius so that it, it was going to kind of turn into a half donut shape. So, let me put that in border radius and let's do it like 50%. So, we can end up with something like that, which isn't what we want. Um, and there is a reason for that. And that is because we've only created a border at the top and a border at the left. Um, so it's trying to do its best at um, efficiently smoothing these out. And well, that's kind of what it's got. That's not really what we want. So the way to work around this is actually to create a border on all sides. Um, uh, let me just comment this out for the second. Shh, sorry, not on uh, Visual Studio anymore. Uh, so I can't use my shortcuts. Let me go old school. Um, and I'm going to create like a, just a border uh, the whole way around it. So if I just do a border for all the sides, uh, again, 50 pixels, I want solid. Uh, let's just make it black so we can see where it is. Black, run that again. Okay, now if I put the border radius around that of 50%, pull it out, pull it down the bottom, we can see it's, it's, it's smoothed it efficiently and we've, we've got like a proper circle now. Um, so if I then put these back in to override the black border, because they're further down in the CSS, uh, we've got that desired effect, which is a half donut. And what then I need to do is to remove this black stuff and remove the red stuff. So the red stuff is easy uh, because that was our background color. Um, and so we can just, let's just set that to transparent for now because we, I don't want to delete it because we, we might want to go back in there again. So I'll get rid of the red and then the border for all the sides. Uh, let's create it as trans. 
and then we've got our half donut which is kind of okay but it's, um, it's slightly on its side so um, just put a rotate transform in for that and that should fix that and let's do it 45 degrees and push run that again and we've got a half donut shape so so far so good um, but obviously this isn't really going to be very useful in production because it's um, it's just a half donut there's no way to control uh, how far along the scale it is like if we want like 50% we probably want half of this or 25% we want obviously like quarter of that so we need some way to be able to control the the amount of blue that we're showing here so let's get into that now and the way that we're going to do it is by using a clipping path and um, there's no uh, unfortunately there's no kind of rotating clipping path that we can use to easily rotate something over the top of it um, but we can use a clipping path which is a polygon uh, we have to do some basic kind of maths to set it up but um, let me show you uh, this clippy which is uh, very useful uh, let me just create a new one here um, so with this we can set up a clipping path and uh, we can kind of see because it's got a photo underneath it so we can kind of see uh, what we need to put into our CSS and what the end result is going to look like so um, let me just put this back again and let me take the rotate transform off because this is how it's going to look with respect to the clipping path um, so we need to design the clipping path at the same angle because the clipping path will be rotated uh, with the uh, the rest of the graphic here when we do the transform on it. So uh, we can't do one at 45 degrees and the other at zero degrees, if that makes sense. So to make this process slightly easier and see what's going on, let's just put the background color of the donut chart back in so that we can kind of see what's going on a little bit better um, and let me take this border radius off as well um, just makes it a little bit more obvious there we go so we're left with our square now um, and then I'm going to put this clipping path in and we're going to play around with it a little bit and we'll be able to see roughly um, what the effect of it is and we can we can move it around a little bit and see where the points are because it's not all that intuitive to be quite honest um, so first point I'm going to create is uh, starting up in the very top left which is 0% 0% so that's top left um, that's going to be the first point of our clipping polygon the next one I'm going to do is 0% uh, so that's x0 y 100 100% uh, which is going to be uh, x and y which is going to be the very bottom and uh, sorry bottom left and then finally I'm going to create one which is 50% uh, x 50% y and that's going to be like right in the middle of there so we're going to kind of end up with something a bit like a kind of triangle shape um, and let me just run that now and let's see what we um, we get from that okay so that's kind of what we wanted um, if I put the border radius back on again now you can see we've got a chunk of it and if I turn this back to transparent again you can see we've got a set proportion of our donut chart there um, uh, let me put it back again just so it's like easy to see what's going on um, so we want to be able to control one of these then by moving the point down from uh, x0 y0 and uh, the y at the moment will move a little bit of this down uh, if I say put that let's move it down 50% so that'll be halfway down the side um, and that should give us like the equivalent of 25%. So let me put that there and uh, let me put the border radius back in. So that will give us a chunk. And if I then turn that back up to 100% again, 
that would then bring us back up to the half. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> 100, zero. So that would then bring us back up to that half. Uh, let's come on this out again. So that's for the first bit. And then we need to kind of move over a little bit more into the y direction. Uh, sorry, the x direction along the top then to expose the rest of that. Um, let's put it back as grey, so we can see what's going on. Run that again. Uh, we want to kind of move over towards the left to show the rest of the top of the border, really. Um, so to do that, we're going to use the X, and if I move this across, let's say to 50%, that should give us that. And there's a problem there because it's kind of um, uh, it's tried to be helpful and um, join the join the dots really, but it's chopped off the top of our donut chart. And if I just pull this out again, so we can see, it's gonna look pretty messy, unfortunately. That's not really what we wanted. So we can get around that by um, adding another point in. Then we kind of want a point at x zero, y zero as well. Um, and let me just put that in 0%, 0%, uh, 0%. Um, and that should add the extra point in that will give us the, kind of the top corner and stop it from chopping it off. Okay, so that's that's a lot better. Um, so now if I go to 100% on the X for the top, yeah, that's kind of what we want. Um, let me just check that it's good. By putting the border radius back in and uh, change this back in to transparent, should get rid of the gunk. Okay, so 100% x, 0% y gives us the full 180 degrees. Uh, if I change that back down to zero on the x, that should give us like the, um, oh, sorry, and 100, give us the 45. And then if I change this, this to 100, that should then give us nothing. Okay, so that is kind of what we want. So we can control the first uh, 90 degrees from the Y component, and then the remaining 90 degrees from the X component. So let me just bring that up to 10 so we can kind of see what's going on there. Um, and then the final thing then to do is then to just go back and do that transform again, which will bring it round to uh, transform. Uh, and we want to rotate, uh, and we want it 45 degrees. That should then bring the whole lot round, back around so it's uh, at a kind of normal perspective. And let's just check it still works. So from zero to sorry, zero will give us the 90 degrees. And then if I move this guy up on the X to 100, that should give us the 180. So we can control this then from these two angles. And so the next part of this is really to move on and start doing this programmatically and then put this into a component. But that's the next video.